Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 33 of my Iron Man Age of Ultron inspired Hulkbuster suit, which I've been working on for over a year now and there's still quite a way to go. Last time I actually did a little bit of a test drive and tried to walk around in it, although I found the ceiling was too low in here really to swing from side to side enough. Um, I basically sorted out the knee latches and also did a bit of Arduino coding. So we've got joysticks in the upper arm to move the arms around, which also will be controlling the lower arm mechatronically, including the hands and various opening sections. So based on how long you hold the buttons down for and combinations of buttons on each side, we're going to be activating different features. So I'm going to carry on with that this week. We've got um, these flaps which open, and we've also got these pop-up weapon pods in the shoulder which are going to pop up to reveal weapons, which I actually need to put a mechanism in for because at the moment they're just on springs. So let's have a closer look at those. So here is the shoulder on one side, and what we've got is this arrangement where we can push it and uh, up it pops which will reveal a weapon which will be underneath and sort of fire down each side of the head so this is just on a spring at the moment um, so it springs up past a certain point um, and it'll also stay down but what we really need is something to give that a shove um, although the travel on it is quite big here's version one of the mechanism which is a motor which i took it out of one of these cordless screwdrivers with no gearing and basically I've fitted a bearing in this block so it can spin nice and smoothly and I've got a bit of plastic there that's a 3D printed coupler to couple to this 6mm shaft and the idea is that it spins this nut um, all the way up and down obviously if the motor was geared it would be more powerful but the nut would move so slowly that the amount of travel we need to push that flap open uh, would be very very slow this is quite quick but it's not that great so we're just going to put uh, 5 volts on, it's actually a 3.6 volt motor. But um, the problem I've got is this rattle, I can't get it to spin on centre no matter what I do. And I don't know if this is because the shaft is slightly um, bent, so even if I hold this end, there's still quite a bad sound. Um, it, does, it does move the nut quite quickly, it's not quite as quick as I'd like. but I can stop it quite easily as well, which is a bit of a concern because um, it's not too bad, it'd probably be okay, but it depends on the weight of the weapon I'm going to put on there um, and uh, you know whether that's going to get jammed occasionally and whether the mechanism gets stuck. So I'm not very happy with this. I had printed the parts for two of them, uh, but I think I'm going to come up with something else. So what I'm going to do instead is a series of pulleys, or at least two pulleys, and one of those is going to be driven by a servo, which is going to be quite a high power servo that fits just in that square place there. I'm going to be using actually a metal geared servo capable of doing uh, 15 kilograms per centimetre, which means at one centimetre radius it can lift 15 kilograms, or in fact that's a stall torque, so it would be just less than that. And that's basically going to drive a cable all the way around these pulleys, um, and this is going to be hinged at one end onto the arm thing that lifts up on the shoulder and the cable will be attached to the actual suit. So as the pulley rotates um, it should obviously move the cable in a straight line and that will push the thing open and shut. So you can see one pulley is much uh, larger than the other and that's because we need to get about 20 centimetres of travel. So half the circumference is that distance with this large pulley and that's the reason it's so big. Um, obviously if we had a motor that could turn round and round and round it could be much smaller uh, but then we'd have to deal with putting end switches in and other things so sometimes if there's a lot of space it's easier just to use the servo So here's a pair of opposites, so we've got one for each shoulder. So these things mount on here where the servos go, so they'll mount just in there. These will mount on the servo using the servo horn through this hole, and the little gear goes on the bottom, or the little pulley. And these servos are GoTech 15 kilogram per centimetre torque servos, the GS5515MG, uh, which are quite meaty, they've got metal gears. They're probably overkill, but at least that means it will definitely work. So here they are assembled, we've got the servo in the back there and of course this thing attached which turns 
And I've actually used uh, black Ninja Flex 3D printer filament, which is flexible to make the drive belt, and that's uh, wrapped around, I actually put holes in the edge here, but it's uh, this one goes all the way around to the other side so that the thing can rotate. Obviously the top one only does 180 degrees. And that of course means that this gets driven up and down by uh, half of this circumference. So we can use that, if we anchor that, we can use this to drive the mechanism up and down. So I now need to build a hinge which attaches this to the top of the shoulder pod and the clamp basically which will fit on the frame of this to hold the cable. So I've printed and installed an additional piece on the back of the servo here which is stuck back to back with the original 3D print and that's got an 8mm hole in. And I've cut these 8mm bits of studding which are actually bolts with the head cut off and I've um, put a slot in there so I can screw it in and this is going to go into here and also into the existing joint on the piece that pops out of the shoulder. So I'm going to get these mounted up and then we'll try and put the camera up high and I'll show you where they fit. Right, here we are. So I'm up here now. I've got this thing um, attached on this pivot and it's the same pivot as this hinge point here. So um, of course now if we clamp that cable in place and rotate the wheel, it will cause the mechanism to lift up. And obviously the ceiling is in the way here unfortunately, so it can't rotate all the way and rotate down again. Just need to hold that in the right place. So I just need to make a clamp to grip that bit of Ninja Flex, which is just under this back piece of wood that runs all the way along. And that should cause this to open quite nicely and shut again. And that's going to eventually reveal a weapon, which we're going to build that fits in here. So that is now motorized and will pop up on demand. Here are my cable clamps, these things just screw on that bit of wood and I've got a screw through there and a hole over the side of the screw so I can put a cable tie in and pull that tight up on the Ninja Flex filament which will go through that loop. I've installed those clamps, there's one here and there's one on the other side here and that's just got the piece of Ninja Flex which is cable tied to it. So now if I revolve the wheel it causes this whole mechanism to lift up. And unfortunately um, the ceiling is still in the way there. We can see that works pretty well. And we can just bring that down again by rotating the wheel. Seems a fairly smooth motion to pop up that weapon pod and have something fire out of it. So now we need to look at some electronics. So I've got two Arduino Unos here with some breadboard and some LEDs and switches to show how the electronics are going to work. Last time we looked at this one. So in each arm we have an Arduino Uno and in each upper arm we have a joystick with two buttons on and I've got these two buttons on the breadboard here you can just see which um, resemble the two buttons on the joystick. So what we want to be able to do is control multiple functions with those joysticks. We need to be able to drive the arm up and down at the elbow and we also have a weapon to fire in the cuff and we have another weapon to fire in the shoulder which is the mechanics we just built. So, so far we looked at the code last time, just to recap, basically this has got various timers and it checks the states of these buttons and how long you've pressed them for. So if I do a short press, we can fire the cuff weapon and a short press on this button will fire the shoulder weapon. If I press and hold them, it activates the other LED while I hold it so that we can drive the arm up and down. So that's short press for the cuff, long press for the shoulder, and that will drive the arm up and down. And we have this in both sides, so we've got two joystick buttons on each joystick. So this will be for the right arm and the left arm. The other circuit I've got here is to go in the body. So we've got various functions, including firing the shoulders and also firing the unibeam. So what I've got here are another two buttons and three LEDs. So these two buttons are basically resembling the signal coming from the shoulder firing function of the other circuit in each arm. So one is the shoulder trigger for the left arm and one is the shoulder trigger for the right arm. So we've got this Arduino set up, so if I press one button, it'll fire one shoulder weapon. 
And if we fire the other one, it will fire the other shoulder weapon. But also, if we press both of them together, it will fire the unibeam. So that means I can use those upper buttons on both joysticks together to fire the unibeam, or I can fire the shoulder weapons independently. So this is a fairly simple circuit. Um, it doesn't really need an Arduino, you could do something similar with um, something like an AND gate, although we do need some switch debounce, so obviously um, it's impossible to let go of both buttons exactly simultaneously. You'll always be left holding one slightly longer, which would then trigger the shoulder. So I've got some timing going on here to uh, do switch debounce to make sure that you basically have to hold these for more than 200 milliseconds so that you don't trigger the shoulder weapons accidentally. Um, we also need the Arduino in the body there to trigger NeoPixels, which will be um, the lights that fire in those weapons, which are individually addressable LEDs. We also need to control those servos we just put in, so probably having one Arduino isn't overkill. And we may even need an additional servo controller board to activate the other functions like the front flaps of the suit and all of those other things that may be triggered from other buttons, and also from a smartphone app which will be coming in the future. Let's just have a quick look at the Arduino code for that second circuit. Um, so basically I've got two variables here called button 1 and button 2, which are used to read those buttons in, and I've got my pins declared as input and output, so I've declared the switches as inputs pull up, which means we don't need pull up or pull down resistors, so we can just basically press that button. It takes it low when it's triggered. Um, the other three LEDs are the outputs, of course. In our main loop, we're reading those buttons with the digital read. So that's reading them into button one and button two variables. Um, I've then said if either are triggered, so if either go low, and this is an OR statement, these two vertical lines, then wait for 200 milliseconds and then read them again. Um, and that makes sure, that, as I said, that we've got that switch debounce and we're not left holding one button slightly longer as long as we let go of them within 200 milliseconds. And then basically we've got four if statements uh, which looks at the states and decides what to do, including one for them both to be switched off which sends all of the outputs low so it turns off all the LEDs. Here are my parts for the weapon themselves and there'll be two of these, one in each shoulder. So we've got this main barrel part here on the top right which is going to have a bunch of NeoPixels stuck through it, which are individually addressable LEDs, which are RGB, and those are going to be mounted on the red thing to the left, which will then poke through the back there, so that I can mount them all just recessed into the holes. The whole thing is going to be mounted on this lever on the far left, and that's going to be pulled up by a cord, so it hangs just underneath the um, shoulder pod when it pops up, and it's going to be hinged on the same hinge point as the shoulder of the arm so that will become clearer once we actually fit it. The parts on the bottom there are to rotate it so we've got this big collar which the barrel rotates in on the left and then we've got some servo parts there to hold a radio control servo and a mounting which goes onto the back of the inner ring of the main barrel. So I'm going to print all those and we'll get them assembled and get them wired up. Here are some of the parts, so this is my main barrel part which rotates in its collar quite nicely and that's already got the piece stuck on the back for the servo to attach to which will sit just behind it so the collar's got a flat on that'll sit flat and that'll sit behind so that it can rotate the barrel then I've got the piece to mount the NeoPixels on which is this so I can wire the whole thing up that's got holes all the way through to run the wires down and then that will push in and drop through so that they're all just recessed inside and the whole thing sits on this, which mounts onto the bit of studding so that it can flip up and down and just be hung just underneath the shoulder pod. So let me get those NeoPixels all wired up and we should be ready to go and wire up the Arduino. So I've got all my NeoPixels wired in, just doing a little test here to check that they all work. 
And these are all in a chain and the Arduino library will let you address them one by one and it shifts the colour down. So I'm just colouring them in red there but they can be any combination of RGB. So here we go, I've got the Arduino and also a power regulator board which will feed 5 volts to the NeoPixel and the servos. And we've programmed up the buttons so now if I press this one and I will warn you there is a strobe effect in use. So this is the right hand weapon. They light up red, it turns, and then it slowly turns back firing and that will of course make a sound effect. And the same for the other one. And then we've got a spare wire on each one which runs up to the servo which will be for opening the actual shoulder pod which still needs coding in. And of course if I press both buttons at once, nothing happens but it will actually activate the um, unibeam. Okay, so here I am in the suit. I've got my buttons wired in. They're not wired into the joysticks. I've got a little bit of breadboard down here with both buttons on. If I press both of the buttons, we should get the unibeam to fire hopefully. So I don't know if you can see that just getting brighter and then pulsing up to white. There we go. And if I press the right hand button, and I have to be careful because the ceiling is still in the way. That pops open. Yes, it does hit the ceiling. And that gun flashes. Of course, there'll be sound effects and uh, so on when that's actually finished. And it shuts again. And the other side, there we go. So hopefully I'm not shooting my own armour off. There is quite a bit of clearance, but not quite enough for a real weapon. Uh, but not much I can do about that. And those are pulled up by strings at the moment on each of those flaps. And they're partially suspended by a bungee, so they're just sat below that feature, which we need to get some panels on. There are quite a lot of other features to wire in yet. We've still got these uh, flaps in the chest, and there's still lights in there, and obviously the pulses in the knee which I haven't wired in yet which are going to be controlled by that same Arduino or some sort of breakout board attached to it. So we'll have a look at those next time and in fact most of next time I'm going to be working on the weapons on the cuff. So I've got this bit of animatronics that opens and some weapons will pop out of there and those will be activated by the other joystick function. I also need to look at those hand grippers because they're controlled by electric drill motors which I'm not particularly happy with. So I'll be looking at that mechanism as well. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel to check back for more updates on this project and other projects including lots of Star Wars stuff, my BB-8 droid and my life-size R6 droid which is entirely 3D printed. Also don't forget to check out my Patreon crowdfunding campaign which is how all my projects are funded by my followers. You can get access to some exclusive rewards including a live broadcast with me. So don't forget to check out the links in the description to this video for social media for sneak peeks and updates and I'll see you next time.